here many times. You can go to Robinsonville, Mississippi. Let's talk a little bit, Al, about our main event. This is for the Inter Goodman for you, too. This one is in the junior lightweight division between Mark Smith, who's a journeyman, but a guy who literally is much better than his record, and Freddie Libertor. We say Mateen is a guy you don't have to look for. I promise you, Smith won't have to look for Libertor. Oh. Freddie Libertor used to be the quintessential brawler. He was hell-bent for leather, taking punches to give punches. And usually those punches were wild. But even in winning, he knew he had to change. And change he did. In his last few bouts, he has honed his defensive skills and movement while still attacking. That style produced a big win over the tall, lanky Frank Canyon. And tonight, he'll be in with another tall stand-up boxer, but he says no big deal. Well, basically, a lot of people are taller than me, so uh, I have no, <laughs> I have no, what's about that. But how would I get inside? Um, I, you know, I guess I would just work my way inside, like the normal way that I always do. I would, you know, press and uh, and keep using my jab. You know, I've been doing that a lot. So, uh, you know, I've been working on my jab, and uh, you know, I find it to be effective. In the ring right now is the other half of this mark smith and smith is a guy we talk about his record his record is not too impressive however he's a guy who always seems to fight up to or down to the level of his opposition and for those of you that watch top rank boxing regularly you saw him against frank pena uh, perform very very well and win that fight and uh, he's had a couple tough losses since but you're right barry when he fights a good fighter he fights better he's beaten jaime garza he's beaten frank pena as you take a look at freddie libertori who's about to make his way into the ring his last win also over frank pena so both men have defeated frank pena who at one time was considered a very bright hope in this division let's take a look then al at the rules here in the state of mississippi 10 point month scoring system winner gets 10 to lose or nine or less three knockdown rule is in effect uh, there is no standing eight count. Fighter can be saved by the bell in the last round, and uh, the referee can stop the fight. Now what's left then is to get on with our first fight. We're going ten rounds, and let's meet him with Michael Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Southern Bell Casino here in Robinsonville, Mississippi, just south of Memphis. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight it's Top Rank Boxing on ESPN. Brought to you by the undisputed, undefeated, King of Beers, Budweiser. Proud to be your bud. All the bouts you see here tonight are sanctioned by the Mississippi State Athletic Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get things started with a 10-round bout. This is in the junior lightweight division. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Martin Casino. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the black trunks with white trim, weighing in at 131 and one half pounds. From Chattanooga, Tennessee, his professional record, 19 victories against 15 defeats with 10 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, he is Mark the Stinger Smith. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the purple trunks with white trim, weighing in at 131 pounds. He comes to us from Bayside, New York. His professional record, 17 victories with 10 KOs against three defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, Freddy Pitbull Liberatore. Okay, gentlemen, you received your instructions earlier today. I want you to obey my commands. Touch up, it's gonna be a good, clean fight. So here's a look at Mark Smith, always absolutely ready to fight. Fitness has never been a question for Mark Smith. And he best be, because in the other corner, Freddie Libertori, and there's no secrets about this man. He is, as uh, we pointed out in the highlights, a very aggressive fighter, but has tempered that aggression in recent time to also concentrate on things like that, jabbing his way in. It's also very quick to say, however, that you're going to be the kind of fighter that I am, you're going to take some shots. You can see when he comes in now, he's jabbing his way in, throwing combinations, a little more head movement. With, with boxers of his style, and you can go all the way up to Mike Tyson to, to talk about this, when they jab their way in, they are just much more effective. 
But you can also use the term warriors for them. And when they do get into a battle, they just have a tendency to sometimes go with what brought them is, which is their right hand. And in Freddie's case, he was walking in trying to throw the hook like that. But he's been jabbing his way in, and so he's, he's getting more effective. But in the old days, he would just lunge in to throw the hook to the body of the head and walk into counter punches. We say, we've said it before, but you can't find two more delightful or friendly fellas than Mark Smith and Freddie Libertori. And of course, we've had both of them for Freddie many times. That's absolutely true. It can be said of this sport in general. I didn't talk all the time about that because I do a lot of other sports. But people ask me who are the nicest athletes, and I can tell you without question, they're fighters. I've been trying to work on the inside. Mark Smith knew that he was going to have to give Freddie lots of movement, but not run, he said. I can't afford to do that, or I certainly won't get a decision. He's paying a price for it early in this fight, as Lee has found him. Good defensive work by Freddie Lee He's blocking punches, slipping, getting inside before Mark Smith has a chance to really unload. Look at the defense of Lee I mean, this is, this is much better than in previous fights. Mark Smith having a real hard time establishing his jab, and that's quite an important weapon for him. Yeah, the end of the first round, and Lee Bertor really establishing the tempo in this fight early on. Smith's going to have to do something to get things turned around in his direction. And we'll be back. We start the second round, and in order to be effective, you mentioned this earlier, Mark Smith is going to have to work the jab. Well, he tried to work it in the first half with very minimal first uh, round, I should say, with very minimal success. Threw a lot of them, 43, but only landed seven. So a bad, bad beginning for... Uh, Mark Smith in the jab department. He did get 13 punches. I mean, you can see the Libertori uh, did much better, throwing more and landing more. Freddie Libertori can be a pesky fighter. Uh, it's the adjective you want to use. You can see this is a 10-rounder. Um, he doesn't have one-punch knockout power, but he, his accumulation of punches is what may get people out of there and has. Yeah, I mean, he just defines the term tough guy. And his uh, trainer, Johnny Rivera, has done a wonderful job with him. They've worked very hard on his skills. You know, so I said, Johnny, yes, I did. last time I called him Charlie for reasons that are inexplicable even to me. So now everybody in the gym's calling him Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> he has me to think, well, if he likes Charlie, then I've done him a service. I guess he likes his real name. <laughs> Libertori down low. Just so I don't call any guests on any show the wrong name. <laughs> People have been getting into fisticuffs lately around here. With yeah, that. that's right. <laughs> Libertori is getting uh, work to the body in a little bit better in this round. Here. You know, even if those jabs don't land, it almost doesn't matter with Libertori. Just so it's out there and it's, it's double jab and it gets him in to do that. There's a beautiful double left hook. That's, the, that's what Freddie Libertori wants more than anything. A good straight right hand and that forces Smith into the ropes. The improvement in Libertori has been extraordinary in the last several fights. Not just coincidence that he has also become a full-time fighter. Very good point, Barry. I'm working in the fish market. Fulton Street Fish Market. Right. Uh, Excellent round for Lee Vittori. Oh. 
Coming to the end of round number two, no doubt about the winner of this round. The man in the purple, Freddie Lee Vittori. We'll be back. No replays of punches that don't land great. But here, triple jab, the last one gets in against Smith. That's what's setting up all the, the uh, body work and all the rest by Freddie Lee Vittori. Just that alone helps him. And Smith, on the other hand, just so worried about having to defend himself against Lee Vittori that he's only thrown 19 power punches and landed 12 in the first couple of rounds. Here are the numbers. And when you combine the fact that he hasn't landed many jabs, that's what you end up with, Mark Smith, that is. Freddie Libertori is one of those pests. I mean, you just can't keep him off you. Please, he takes your game away from him. He was supposed to fight uh, Pete Taliaferro um, and uh, hurt his left hand. He actually hurt the hand against Pena in the fourth round of his fight with Pena. They thought it was healed, and then preparing for the Taliaferro fight, he hurt it again. We're going to talk a little later about Pernell Whitaker and his fight with Santos Cardona. I want to publicly thank Pernell for uh, appearing with me on uh, February the 20th in Las Vegas. Uh, Bally Shoes is having an event that's going to raise $5,000 for Westcare, which is a drug rehabilitation center in uh, Las Vegas. And Pernell was kind enough to do it, and uh, we all appreciate it, and it should be a great event. Pernell also one of the good guys from Boston. Yes. It's almost redundant to start talking about that because uh, all the years I've been doing this, I've been around this sport about 15 years, I, I, I can only remember one or two guys who would fall into the category of jerk. Yeah. Not too many. Mark Smith has a real problem here. He's not getting his jab in, and thus he's not able to throw his right hand as much as he would like. And that's most of his arsenal. That's what he likes to land. to kind of work his way and even when he doesn't throw the jab but there is see that the double jab the right hand and the left to the body is the classic combination for freddie liberatory and then what sometimes follows is another left hook to the head seems to be a little bit of a cut along the right eye of liberatory but he's certainly not letting it affect him smith starts to mock him at the end of the third round but once again liberatory is winning all around so we'll be back freddie liberatory just a little reddening around the eye. It is not yet cut. Vittori has been violent with cuts in the past. In fact, he says, very candidly, it's probably why I haven't had more fights. He's only had 21 fights. And he says, oftentimes, he says, because I fight the way I do, it takes me a little longer to heal. The numbers in the third round, and Smith just simply is going to have to do more. Not getting much in. Great left hooks inside by Libertori. You know, he's a oh, nice combination. See, Mark Smith is a pretty quick-handed puncher. Well, he's not, we're not saying he's a world champion or top ten fighter, but he's a very quick-handed puncher, and yet with it all, Freddie Libertori is, is slipping the, a lot of those punches. And getting the fight on his turf. I mean, he is right where he wants to be, and whatever punching power Mark Smith has, Libertori is taking it away by being on his shoulder. Shut out on your card. Hard to see it any other way. The only thing Freddie Lee Vittori is doing tonight that they might not like is he's slapping a little bit with his left hook to the body and the head. Once he's on the inside, once you let Lee Vittori get in there, you got a problem. And again, as he got Smith bouncing off the ropes, and he's just keeping it right there. And that one he turned down. Libertori really turned down. Mark Smith cannot stay on those ropes. Mark 
Smith was telling us today how confident he is now that physically he's always been ready, but mentally he feels like he's in better condition. He's done the world tour to fight. He has fought in France on a couple of occasions, in England. He fought in South Africa two fights ago. He's been to San Remo, Italy. Come on, baby. Come on. You know some bicycle racers who have visited fewer countries in Europe. It's true. He's even fought in Rome. Rome, Georgia. Right there. Right there. <laughs> I might say that Jim Everett has fought in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we weren't going to get through this show without that reference. I just knew it. <laughs> Liberatore is just doing a workmanlike job. Yeah, he's just not giving Smith any room to punch. And when he is on the outside, he's moving his head, he's slipping and blocking punches. You know, Mark Smith has a very good interior defense, too, and he's showing a lot of that, but it's just that Liberatore is, is so active in there. Not to mention strong. Coming to the end of the fourth round. We'll be back. is working the inside those specialists there's always three and four punches at a time as evidenced by that flurry so mark smith's going to have to find something something to solve the riddle that is for the Vittori so far tonight here the numbers in the fourth round Vittori is picking it up with every round now smith did land 31 punches in that last round 27 power punches of 65, but Libertori 34 of 83 power punches in the last round. See, there was an example of Libertori throwing a wild right hand, but then came right with a left hook to the head. Now, I'm going to tell you something that may seem contradictory to the way we've set up this fight. Mark Smith, in the last round, started to land the left hook. And normally, you don't want to hook with a hooker, so to speak. You know, throw left hooks with a guy that also throws left hooks. But I have a feeling that's a, a more powerful punch for Mark Smith than he normally lets on that it is. And he's landing it against Libertori. I think if I were him, I might start trying to get inside and throw that left hook a little bit more. Good right. Forced Smith backward, which is exactly what Libertori wants. You may have heard him. Smith has been knocked out once in his career by Giovanni Parisi. That was the fight we spoke of a moment ago in San Remo, Italy, earlier this year. Mark Smith's trip to San Remo is about as pleasant as, as most of mine have been for ESPN. Yes, that's true. <laughs> jabs from Smith, trying to set something up behind him. fight to sell when your record is uh, 20 and 15 as Mark Smith says so he needs a win like this one over Freddie Liberatore to even make himself acceptable as a journeyman opponent yeah, and a lot of times too you can look at a record like that and say that Freddie Pendleton is the guy we always talk about as a guy who had a mediocre record before he became a champion however Mark Smith has lost his last three fights and that does not bode well Freddie Libertori now. And Johnny, don't call me Charlie Rivera. Will be the voice <laughs> that you hear. see let's uh, take a look at uh, Libertori with the right hand that nailed Mark Smith Smith was leaning back a little bit so the punch 
didn't do quite as much damage as we might have anticipated. Believe me, there was things being said in that corner. And, and I'll bet profound things. Probably profound. Only three of 20 power punches landed for Mark Smith in the last round, so uh, not a good round for him altogether. Probably the numbers through five rounds with a decided edge to Freddie Libertori. He is doing what he did against Frank Payne in his last fight. He is workmanlike in his effort. He is landing good, good punches shot. and not getting hit. Sorry, I didn't mean to okay. jump on you. There's no. a very good left hand that I believe hurt Mark Smith. Feel free to jump any anytime there's action. <laughs> has had such a hard time landing any of his power punches, whether they be straight right hands or left hooks. And he knows at 28 years old, he's got to get some wins under his belt. There's no great uh, advantage in being the best 20 and 16 fighter in the world. defense of Mark Smith it's not bad he blocks a lot of punches and so it's not that Libertori is getting there with everything it's just that uh, he's throwing so many more fights like this one it, they are not all black and white in terms of the way things happen there's lots of gray areas in there and uh, that's why, even though Libertori is pretty much handling things, it's not as if he's dominating. Good uppercut. Left hand. Yeah. No, and in fact, you know, the real scare card for Freddie Libertori, I would have to think, is he's in there against the guy who is really not hitting him very much, and yet there's still a lot of reddening around the eyes and that kind of thing. I, you know, I hearken back to Scotty Olson, another guy that you and I liked a lot and still do like a lot. But unfortunately, he just gets puffy, gets red very quickly, and, and I would hope that that's not the case with Freddie Libertori. And in his last fight, Scotty Olsen broke his hand. I thought still won the fight. They didn't give him the decision. This was in California. Um, the, and maybe for the reasons you're citing. And like, like Freddie Libertori, Scotty Olsen is a guy that when he jabs his way in, fighting this style is much more effective. Scotty Olsen getting married, by the way. I want to congratulate him. I just saw bumped into him in Las Vegas, and he is engaged. He's got all kinds of social notes. Very good stuff. Very good stuff. You're sort of the Susie of top rank boxing. Coming to the end of round number six, and we'll be back right after this. He's a 10-second fight. Land on the inside. It's effective. Here he will throw an excellent uppercut, and Libertori gets out of there, but the, the uppercut and, and the left hooks have landed for Smith. Not been able to get the jab and straight right hand in. Now, of course, the thing that Smith has to look at here is this fight goes along is I don't have him winning a round. I don't believe you do either. No. And he's got, so he's got to start thinking knockout, and he, really that's not his game. He's a guy who is not likely to get you out of there unless it's cumulatively, and there's no such animal as cumulatively today for Mark Smith. And here are the cumulative numbers for his six rounds. Huge edge for Libertori. Now you see, though, Smith is trying to back Freddie Libertori up, thinking maybe he can nail him with something. A lot of fighters like Freddie don't do well when you push him backwards. They're not used to it. And, uh, I don't know if we did point it out. People can see it, obviously. But the, yet again, another fighter with... Uh, one shoe that's uh, one color and uh, one shoe that's the other. This is becoming, I think we can officially say it's a fashion trend now. Uh, I think so. And, and again, to quote our director, Gary Clapp. You want to quote him or should you I? You go ahead. You quote He's him. He's got another pair just like him at home. Mark 
Smith, now he's not a bad fighter on the inside, but Freddie Libertor is going to beat you on the inside. He's short, he, he, he knows how to work on the inside, and he's going to be the tallest fighter most of the time on the inside. You know Smith is doing a fair share of good work in this. And he is doing a much better job defensively, too. He's just keeping his right hand up around his chin, usually. Yeah, the old Freddie Libertor, oh, good hook on the inside by Smith. The old Freddie Libertor would have been hit with a lot more punches by now. like that with a guy that's got a good left hook. Mark Smith might do well to take a shot at that. He's starting to land that punch. And he is doing that, actually. He's laying yeah. in there, I think, by his own volition. the uppercut though this will be a tough round to judge Mark Smith is a guy who you look at him and you look at his record and you just say that is not consistent he took a good left hand right there and a seven it's time to catch spring fever at Napa Start the eighth round we're scheduled for ten even better round for Mark Smith who told us this morning that this is the fight for him he's just a week and a half shy of his 29th birthday with a 20 and 15 record, which we've detailed as not as bad as it looks, but still he needs wins. Nice combination by Libertori. Now a little cut over the left eye of Freddie Libertori. Libertori, you know, is now starting to set down even more in his punches. Wasn't doing that as much in the, in the early rounds. and how much of a struggle it is for either man to land right now. Body shot again from Libertori. Got Smith to hold on a little bit. Very close exchanges here. But of course, Libertori had done so much over the initial round. has gotten too far inside, in my opinion. He could rumble with Libertori, but he's letting Libertori completely smother his punches. He's the guy that probably needs a knockout, Mark Smith, so he can't afford to just work well on the inside. He's got to look for something big to land. And instead, it is Libertori who continues to find a home for both hands. Dan Smith with the uppercut. That's one weapon on the inside that's really worked for him. Well, you know one thing Freddie Libertori is doing that's not very good? He isn't bending on his punches. He's standing straight up and just kind of slapping. That was a good right to the body by Libertori. He does good body work when he thinks about it. Yeah, that's a very good point. When he thinks about it, sometimes he just throws punches. That's the way you feel about it. That's what he thought it was. Double left hand from Smith, and he took a double left hand from Libertori. And there's the danger of hooking with a good left hook artist. Another good left hand from Smith. Oh, tremendous body shot. Hurts Smith. And now it is Smith that is in trouble. Smith on one green broken. Some pretty good exchanges in that round. They got some work to do at Libertori's eye. We take you into Smith's corner. Oh, you hooked him great. You hooked him great. Looking good, Mark. Looking good, baby. Don't be in there real close like that because you've got to win the round. Right. Now, he's right. doing as much as you. Meanwhile, on the Libertori is corner, he's you can see the work being done on that left eye. Yeah. Right. 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 Smith 
Hands on the inside has landed some pretty good left hooks. There's one that nailed and a double left hook, in fact, that got to Freddie Libertori. Was Libertori busy in the last round? 126 punches thrown in round eight. Cut appears to be up in the brow, and I think that's probably an earlier cut that was opened up again. It was not a big problem. We asked Lee Brittori if he looked at any tapes of Marks, but he said, no, I said, you know, honestly, he said, there's only two things that can hit me, a left or a right. <laughs> He's got a point there, doesn't yeah, he? That's a very good point. Lee Brittori with a decided edge now in this fight. I've given every round to Libertori. One was a, I made a draw. Every other round went to him. It's not that Mark, Mark Smith is close to being in every round, but then he doesn't quite get over the hump, and that's why the big edge to Libertori. I gave him one round. He hasn't been able to counter Libertori coming in with that right hand. That's one of the first times to be able to land that shot. And it looks like it's there, but it must not be, because Smith's pretty quick-handed puncher. the body from Libertori. That's the Libertori combination. Two jabs, a right, and then a left hook to the body. It's almost, it's like he's programmed to do that. And that's good, because if you throw that many punches, you're probably not going to get hit by your opponent. night for Mark Smith. He's obviously in excellent condition. He always is. His head was into this fight. Wanted badly to win. But Freddie Libertori has just been a very difficult target for him and it's been smothering him. The whole nice shot. Left right combination. The right hand sent him down. That was about as perfect a combination to the hand as you could throw. Tori will try to get him out of it. Mark Smith's only been knocked out once before in his career. I don't think he's got it all back together quite yet, but I believe he's going to get through the round. Another huge right hand, and down goes Smith again, but the bell will save him. All he has to do is stand up, and the round's over. right hand that Mark Smith was hit with. Here's the first one. <laughs> Excellent right hand by Freddie Libertori. Followed a good combination, as you pointed out. That was the first knockdown. There's the second knockdown. Again from a right hand as Mark Smith leaned in. So we come to the tenth round. I'm not sure Mark Smith has it all together yet. into the ropes. You know, what, you know what's interesting? Freddie Libertori now is throwing his punches with more abandon. You know, when you take away that aggressive wildness, 
you can also take away some of your power because he's been very measured in what he's done here tonight. But well, now you can almost see him right. thinking during the course of the fight. Yeah, very good point, Barry. I mean, that's really true. The wheels are turning. Well, if uh, Lee Vittori needed a uh, punctuation mark to uh, okay, punctuation point to make sure that this fight was over, that would probably be it. Looking for that combination that sent him down the first time, but he missed with the left hand. And again, Smith in the corner now holding on. And in trouble once again, and Lee Vittori right on him. Smith about to go, and a standing eight count. Libertori thought he'd won the fight, thought that Martin Casino was stopping it. Now, we were told originally they had waved off the standing gate count. This referee used it, however, and it is part of the rules here in Mississippi. And Smith goes down again. That's it. Fight's over. And as you said, it just really puts an exclamation point at the end of a lopsided fight. Just another superb performance by Freddie Libertori. He's getting better. He's getting better in every outing. Let's take a look at the last knockdown. There will be, I believe, well, that was more of a push, really. Ironically, it stopped on more of a push, although the knockdown before it certainly was a legitimate knockdown. And for Mark Smith, a very disappointing evening. And can Freddie Libertori get through a fight without a cut? It doesn't look like it. He's got one this time, too. And that's going to be a real scare card for Freddie Libertori. Let's remind you that the Bristol International Race... Tenth and final round, the winner by TKO victory from Bayside, New York, Freddie Pitbull Libertori. Freddie Libertori is the winner by TKO in round number 10. An impressive win for him. Runs his record to 18 with 3 and 1. As we go to break, let's take a look at some results. We'll be back. Robinsonville, Mississippi, just this side of Memphis, Tennessee. Well, the man in the spotlight right now is none other than the Freddie Lee Vittori, who's run his record to 18, 3 and 1, and he is with our own Al Bernstein. Now, thanks, Barry. Freddie, this was a performance like your last couple in which you improved in every phase of the game. Did you feel that? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I took it to him. I knew he was a durable guy. He's a tough guy, so I figured I'd have to wear him down, chop him down slowly, you know. I didn't want to go out there looking sloppy, you know, and start throwing uh, the wide shots. You know, my trainer and my manager kept telling me for this fight, keep everything short. So that's what I'm working on, keeping everything short. You looked very measured in what you did, and especially jabbing your way in. Well, um, I was jabbing my way in. You know, I felt a little stiff in the beginning, but then after, you know, as the fight, you know, progressed, uh, that's when I started progressing, and, uh, you know, I started coming into my own. All right, let's take a look now at, uh, I think it's the second, first knockdown that you had, and you tell us what's going on here. Right now, I just, I caught him with the left hook and right hand, the right hand perfect right on the button. Just push that button, and down they go. Well, you push, you push the button again, because here's the second knockdown, another right hand. This is crushing, uh, bang. Uh, I usually take out a lot of guys like that, but uh, he's tough, see, and, and he came up. Good sound effects. Johnny Rivera. I didn't call you Charlie this time, John. And we got it right, his name right, too. Freddie Libertori for a We got everything right tonight, and so did he. He have been working hard with him in the gym. This has to be very gratifying to see a fighter improve like this. Oh, sure. I, I, I'll take 100 fighters like Freddie anytime. You know, he does what, he, uh, what he's told. He listens, and, uh, you know, especially in the corner, you knock a guy down. It's so easy to lose your composure. He kept his cool. Uh, he listens. I'm very happy. Each fight, I keep telling him there's still something we got to go back to. I'm still not satisfied, but I'm happy, you know? Real, real quickly, I want to get Stan Hoff and tell us real quickly what's next for Freddie. Well, I don't know what is next, but I would like to have the USBA title. So I'd like to go for the young man that's from this area, uh, Talafaro. Uh, Pete Tellerfaro. Pete Tellerfaro. I'd like to do that. All right. Congratulations. Thanks, Good thanks. win for Freddie Libertori. We've got the boxing guide now as we take you into Ringside Report, where we're going to getting to be a guy who seems to be getting better with every outing. He's a junior lightweight who, while I don't think he's ready to fight for a world title right now, and his manager, Stan Hoffman, probably knows that, at 27 years of age, 